Hey, what's up everyone? This is Julie Reynolds, AKA Nurse Jar. In this training video, I'll be demonstrating the 2022 Headmaster Testable Skill Donning and Removing PPE Gown and Gloves Only, Emptying Urinary Drainage Bag, and Measuring and Recording Urinary Output with Hand Hygiene. You're actually performing four skills in one. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you'll be required to do is to sanitize your hands with hand sanitizer, okay? And you'll have to rub your hands until they are completely dry. All right, they're dry. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is collect my PPE, which will be my isolation gown and one pair of gloves. I'm going to don my gown first, and you'll want to unfold it, ensuring that you do not shake open the gown and that no parts of the gown touches the floor. When you open it up, you want to make sure that the back of the gown is facing you, and then you'll place your arms into the sleeves. After placing your arms into the sleeves, you'll tie your neck strap You'll want to tie your straps into a loose bow or a slip knot. This way, it won't be so difficult for you when you're untying the straps. Okay, now that I have my neck strap tied, I'm going to close my gown as much as possible in the back, and then I'm going to tie my waist strap again. You want to tie it in a loose bow or a slip knot. Okay, and then I'm just going to readjust my gown to make sure it is completely closed as much as possible in the back. The next thing I'm going to do is put on my gloves. Now the cuff of your gloves have to cover the cuff of your gown. The easiest way to ensure this happens is that you pull the cuff of your gown midway your palm and then place your glove. This way you won't be fighting with trying to get the cuff of the glove over the cuff of the gown. I'm going to do the same with the opposite sleeve. There we go. Now that I've uh, donned my PPE, I can now enter into the residence room. Hi, good morning, Mrs. Jones, how are you? Awesome, my name is Julie, I'm your CNA, and today I'll be emptying your urinary drainage bag and measuring and recording your urinary output, okay? All right, Mrs. Jones, first I want to make sure that your bed is in a, at a safe, low level, and it is. Your bed bowls are locked. I'm going to give you your call light in your hand. Just press that button if you need me for anything, okay? I'm going to provide you with privacy by closing your privacy curtain. Mrs. Jones, before I get started, is there anything um, I can do for you? All right, Mrs. Jones. Okay, so... With Headmaster, your supplies will not be located at the bedside. Instead, your supplies will be located on a centralized table that is easily accessible to you in the testing room. The first supply item I'm going to collect is going to be a chucks. I'm going to use this chucks as a clean barrier to place on the floor underneath the urinary drainage bag. If the testing site does not have chucks, you can always use a towel. Once I get the chucks or the clean barrier underneath the drainage bag, I'll collect the remaining um, supply items, which will be a graduate or a measuring container and one alcohol pad. I'm gonna place these supplies on the clean barrier, and I'm gonna go ahead and prep my alcohol pad by opening it up and placing it also on the clean barrier. 
The next thing that I'm going to do is remove the drainage tube from the holster, place it inside the measuring container, making sure it does not touch any area on the inside of this container. I'm going to then open the drain and drain the urine. Again, making sure no parts of the tube touches the inside of the measuring container. I'm just milking the bag now to ensure that I drain out all the urine. And once all the urine is drained, I'm going to close the drain or the clamp. Then I'm going to take my alcohol wipe and clean the outside edges of the drainage tube. Once I do that, I'll place the drainage tube back into the holster and I'm just gonna throw away my trash. All right, Mrs. Jones, I've emptied your drainage bag. Now I'm gonna go measure and record your urinary output, okay? Is there anything I can do for you before I leave? All right, Mrs. Jones, your bed is still in a low safe position. Bed wheels are still off. You still have your call light in hand. Would you like for me to um, open up your privacy curtain or keep it closed? All right, Mrs. Jones, I'll keep it closed for you. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to collect my, the clean barrier and the uh, graduate, and I'm going to take it to a hard level surface. Now during testing, your, the nurse aid evaluator will instruct you on what hard level surface he or she wants you to place the container to measure it, okay? So once I get it on the hard level surface, I'm going to just wait a couple of seconds until the urine stops that wave-like motion. Then I'm going to squat to get at eye level and measure the urine. So I'm just gonna bring this up close to you, okay? So the graduate will have two sides of numbers. It's going to have ounces, and then on the left side is going to have milliliters. You want to make sure that when you record, when you measure and record, that you use the numbers on the left side. They're going to be larger than the ounces. Now, if you look and see, my measurement or the urine is between 100 and 125 cc's, okay? If it's in between the tick marks, you will want to round up. Okay, so I am going to record 125 mils or cc's, all right? So now what I'm going to do is I am going to collect my clean barrier, dispose of it into the waste bin. I'm going to empty the contents of the graduate into the bedside commode or toilet, making sure it does not splatter. Then I'm going to rinse the container. After I rinse the container, I'm going to empty the rinse into the bedside commode or toilet, again, making sure it does not splatter. Then I'm going to dry the contents, or excuse me, dry the good measuring container and replace it back in storage. At this time, I'm going to go record my measurement. After recording my measurement, I will remove my gloves without contaminating myself, immediately dispose of them, and then sanitize my hands with hand sanitizer. I will rub my hands until they are completely dry. Okay, they're dry. Now, I will remove my gown by untying the neck straps first. 
and then untying the waist straps. Now, remember, ah, I can't talk, I'm sorry. When removing the gown, you have to remember that the outside of the gown is considered dirty or contaminated. So you have to remove it from the inside out. The easiest way to do that is to lean forward a little bit and then place your hands on the inside of the gown without touching the outside. Then you will remove one sleeve and the other and hold it at arm's length as you're rolling the gown away from you. Okay, arm's length. And then immediately dispose of the gown into the appropriate waist bin. And now at this time, you can actually go perform hand hygiene. So I'm gonna bring the camera closer. Now with hand hygiene, if the testing site sink has two handles, you'll need to turn on both handles. If it has one handle, you'll need to turn that handle to the center setting. My sink has two handles, so I'm going to turn on both handles, wet my wrist, hands, and fingers, lightly clap my hands together to remove any excess water, get soap, and I'm getting a lot of soap, and then you'll want to lather your hands for at least 20 seconds, maintaining your hands below the level of your elbows with fingertips down. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five, 1,000, six, 1,000, seven, 1,000, eight, 1,000, nine, 1,000, 10, 1,000, 11, 1,000, 12, 1,000, 13, 1,000, 14, 1,000, 15, 1,000, Make sure you lather your wrist. You interlace your fingers together to wash in between your fingers and wash your thumbs. 21,000, once I've counted to 25 using the storm count, I'm going to clean underneath my nails by rubbing my nails against the opposite palm. Don't forget your thumbnail. Now I'm going to rinse all the soap off of my lower arms, wrists, hands, and fingers, making sure my hands stay below the level of my elbows with fingertips down and making sure I do not touch the insides of the sink. If you accidentally touch the insides of the sink, you'll need to stop, look at the NAE, and let him or her know that you touch the insides of the sink and whether or not they would like for you to restart the hand hygiene skill. Now that I've rinsed my hands, I'm going to double check to make sure I have removed all soap just by twisting my wrist, again, maintaining my hands below the level of my elbows with fingertips down. Once I have all of the soap off of my lower arms, wrist, hands, and fingers, I'm going to gently tap my hands together to remove any excess water. I'm going to get paper towel and begin drying by drying each individual finger of each hand first. Okay, this is a required step. So you have to dry each individual finger on each hand first, and then you can dry the remaining areas of your hand. Then you're gonna dispose of that paper towel. Get another paper towel if, need, if you need to continue drying your hands. Dispose of that paper towel. Then get a clean, dry paper towel to turn off the taps. At this time, you will tell the NAE, skill complete. It's very important that you state skill complete after each individual skill. This alerts the nurse aide that you have completed that skill and you are ready to uh, begin your next skill. 
Once you stay, or excuse me, once you state skill complete, the nurse aid evaluator will have you go to the relaxation room. Okay, they have you go there so he or she in the contracted um, acting resident can set up the room for your next skill. This usually takes anywhere from three to five minutes, okay? I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you.